Hi everybody, it's Pastor Lorraine again. Uh, thanks for coming back. Um, don't mind about my voice so much. Remember since it's Sunday, a voice becomes like this. But thanks God, we'll continue. Uh, children of God, today I'm having a new message for somebody. Somebody was watching me crying inside not knowing where to go, not knowing what to do anymore. You are suffering from broken relationship. Today I want to focus on how to deal with a broken relationship. You might be divorced, you might be disappointed, you might be discouraged in life. I might be talking to someone who was engaged, maybe for a year. Someone promised to marry you at the end of the year. Or maybe on the man that he promised that he will come and show up himself into your, into your family, the person just disappear. Maybe you have been married for five years, maybe for 10 years, for 15 years, I can count. But let me tell you, all of a sudden, your husband or your wife turn back against you. Let me tell you, my brothers and sisters, it's not the end of the world. You can make it. Someone might be saying, woman of God, you don't know. I try hard to move on. I try to forgive myself. I try to make it in life. But when I look back, when I look the way my partner left me, it's not easy. When you look him, you look at him, maybe somebody would who, who dump you. He moved on with your friend. He moved on with your relative. He moved on with a person that you know very well. Sometimes you meet them at the mall, they are happy. And you wish them not to have success together. But instead of seeing them prospering, you see them prospering. But when you look at your life, things are just falling apart. Things are not going well with you. You ask yourself, where have I wrong? Am I not good? Am I not lookable? And maybe God has cursed me. No, my friends. No, my brothers and sisters. You are not cursed. Remember. In everything, God does his things unto your life, unto your life according to his way and according to his due time. Let me tell you, you might be divorced, you might be disappointed, but you'll make it in life. Let me tell you, I love to say this, there is hope to those who are still living. That marriage of yours, that relationship of yours, if God Almighty is by your side, let me tell you, it will come back again. It will stand up again. It will come to in, in its own original again. Let me tell you, my brothers and sisters, don't go on with a wound to another relationship. Why am I saying this? Someone might be saying, woman of God, I don't understand him. Where are you taking me to? Point number one, learn to forgive yourself. That's the first point. Sometimes you, might, you, you, you may feel like it's not easy to forgive yourself. Maybe at the root cause of that relationship to be broken. Maybe, for example, you are, you are a woman. You were very harsh to that relationship. It made your partner, your man, your husband, or your fiancé to step out of that relationship. So now you want things to come back together. Now someone has taught you how to talk to another person, how to be submissive. So when you try to talk to that partner of yours, he's saying that now I've changed. The person is no longer giving you an ear. Maybe the person has moved on. He's saying that, no, I can't back, come back to you because you can't change. Whereas the, down in your, in your heart, you can feel that you have changed. So you are, you are not forgiving yourself because, because of that. Because you can feel that you are, the core, you, you are the core person who made that relationship not to work. But you want to make things up with your partner. But your partner is no longer giving you time and chance. Forgive yourself. Let me tell you. If the person does not come back to you, it means he was not yours. A person who's meant to be yours, he will come back to you one day. He will make it a point that he comes back to you. Let me tell you, the Bible says, when God says to Jeremiah, 
You, Jeremiah, my son, I knew you before you were born. I knew you before you were conceived, even when your mother and your father met. I knew you were in my mind. Let me tell you, maybe that relationship or maybe that marriage, it was just a learning curve for you to learn something. It was the preparation of where you are going. So my brothers and sisters, learn to forgive yourself. Point number two, try to make up. When I say to make up, don't take your past mistake to a new relationship. When you meet someone else, don't refer your previous mistakes to her or to him. Don't talk about your previous relationship to a new person. For example, maybe you are dating somebody now. You start to talk about your previous one. You said that, hey, remember when I date my first man, my first husband, he used to buy me chocolates. He used to, to surprise me. Let me tell you, things, uh, things are different. And we are coming from different background. Maybe someone is not from that family of buying someone the chocolates, but is from showing love to somebody. So you, you, you'll make your, your partner to feel so small. When you think about your previous one, you think that, no, I'm not in a competition. It will make your new relationship not to work. So when you're in a new relationship, just accommodate the person the way he or she is. The Bible says, remember not the former, the, the, the former things, not consider the things of old, of old. Look, I'm doing new things to you. Let me tell you, my brothers and sisters, when God is about to give you a new relationship, allow God Almighty to lead you. Don't take your previous relationship that didn't work to a new relationship. Because once you move on with, a, with an old thing to a new relationship, it won't work. So point number two, don't compare your previous partner with a new partner. Point number three, when you are in a new relationship, try to find out what is it that your partner wants. Don't share what your partner loves most to your friends. Someone may be saying, woman of God, I don't understand. Most especially we ladies. We love to take whatever that our, our partners or whatever our husband are doing for us and take the, it to our friends. You will say, hey, you know what? My husband loves, uh, let's say, for example, he loves a, a, a coleslaw. He loves you. He loves me cooking him pork. He loves me doing one, two, three. Let me tell you, the strong point of your husband, your friends will go and surprise him about that. You'll be shocked one day. Your friend will going, is going to surprise your husband on his birthday with the present that he loves most. Let's say, for example, maybe your husband loves milk, milkshake most. On his birthday, your friend order him a milkshake before you do it. And they will start to think, no, how come this lady, she knows what I love? Maybe I married the wrong person. You'll find that your, your partner will tend to be, you'll turn against you and look at your friend. That's how our relationships are broken sometimes. When you end up finding out that your partner is dating your friend, it is because of the mistakes that we ladies, we women, even you men, you can make it. By telling your friends what your partner life most. Let me tell you, what your, your partner love most is your secret, is what belongs to you and him alone. Don't share what your partner love most to your friends or, to the, or take it to the public. Because at the end of the day, people can do the best out of what you did. So this is point number three. Don't share what your partner loves most with your friends. Learn to have your quiet time with your partner. Whatever that he surprised you with, make it to be your secret. As now is January, we are going to February now. It's a, it's a month of gift. It's a Valentine's month. When your partner buy, buy you something, you might find that maybe someone is not fortunate enough. His or her partner is not good on doing that. So when you go 
and talk about what your, your, your man or your woman did for you on Valentine's Day. Some, they will envy that. They will start to dig for your past mistakes and tell your partner your past mistakes. That's point number three. Point number four. Don't share most of your past to a new partner. Why am I saying this? There's some of the things which happened maybe before you became a Christian. So you want to take it into a new relationship to your new partner. You say that now, you know what? While I was um, doing my metric or while I was doing my first year, I dated, I dated four people at, at a go. At the end of the day, those people, they dumped me. And that time, I felt like it's the end of the world. The person is going to judge you because of that. Let me tell you, as I said, that point number one, learn to forgive yourself. We all make mistakes. Don't tell your, your, your partner about your past mistakes. Because even himself or herself, before she met you, or maybe the, the, the time you came to his or her picture, she was having three men or three women whom he or she was dating. But she won't tell you about them. So remember, when you are fighting, he will tell you about that. Yes, how can you make it? Because you are thinking about you, you are a prostitute. I knew that you, you, you can't leave your old ways. Before I met you, you were dating five people before me at a go. Just imagine. There are some of the things disclose it while necessarily. If maybe he has asked you about it or maybe he had some clue about it, it's good to disclose. But if he didn't ask you about it, I don't see it necessarily to go and talk about it to your partner. According to my understanding and the way nature is, if there's something that a man cannot forgive a woman, it's, it's, it is when it involves another man. In most cases, as we people, we know that even if you can say whatever to a man, yes, he can forgive you. But if you double cross him, or maybe you make him to compete with another man in your life, he won't forgive you, I'm telling you. But we women, we have been given that enough space in our hearts. That's when we can be married into a polygamous marriage. A man can be married with four, five wives. We don't have a problem about that. But with a man, I'm telling you, it's different. So this is point number three. Don't share your previous relationship with your husband or with your present partner who want to marry you. Why am I saying this? Remember, when you enter into a new relationship that is serious, you must, as I said, learn to forgive yourself so that God will forgive you because you'll be a totally new person altogether. God has forgiven you for your past mistakes. We all make mistakes. I'm a woman of God. I'm, I'm having my own history, but I don't want my history to come with me to my marriage because I cannot condemn myself forever. So if you do, if you do so, You'll be dwelling on the past, but in a present situation. You are suffering, you're in a marriage, but suffering from a pre previous breakup. You're failing to move on. Point number four. Don't compare your marriage or don't compare your relationship with the previous one. Maybe your previous uh, a, a partner was an engine he was was an engineer and now you are married to a teacher for example you are compete you, you want him to compete with your previous engineer your previous engineer used to buy you this and that that one is just a teacher he cannot afford what your previous one used to do you'll take him to the mall and say buy me one two three and he said no i cannot afford this you are saying no you are poor you know what my, my, my previous partner used to buy me this when on his payday. That's what makes you to suffer. And obviously, this thing, it will lead the, the relationship not to go on. The man will say, you know what? Me, I'm not that one. I cannot afford that. I think it's better to end here. I'll get someone who will understand me, who will accept me the way I am. So when you sit down, you start to look back. I'm the one who made mistake. I'm the one who who contributed for this relationship not to have gone on. 
So you are suffering from that. Children of God, I want to tell you something. Today you can make it. Today you can have it a starting point. If you can take these four points that I told you now, this is just a tip for you. That when you want to move on to a new relationship, don't take things of the past to a new relationship. Really, if you want to go on with those things, you cannot make it. And don't compare your men with your friend's men. Because maybe your friend might be lying to you that my man is doing one, two, three. So you want your man to compete with that one. Whereas maybe she's the one who's buying those things for herself. She can say it to you. So you are failing because of that. Whatever that other people are managing to do, don't compare it into your relationship. Just tell yourself that my relationship is unique. So because of that, you are suffering. When you try a relationship, it breaks. When you try a, a relationship, it fails. It's because of that. Children of God, as a woman of God, I want you to learn new things. Someone might be saying, woman of God, whatever that you were saying, is exactly that is happening to me. I'm married to a man. He gave me four kids. He left me. He gave me two kids. He left me. He gave me one child. He left me. But I, I want him to come back. I will do it again. I want to start afresh. Let me tell you, my sister. Let me tell you, my mom. You can make it. If you don't come back, if you married to another woman, yes, it's fine. Let me tell you, God will give you another man. God will give you another woman. But the, the only mistake that you must not do is what I was telling you about. I just want to pray for you right now. That let God Almighty create a clean heart inside you. Let God Almighty give you a new mindset. See things in a new way. Have a new attitude. See things in another way. When you have your own things, take it to be your own, it to be your own alone. Don't share your relationship with your friends. Don't share your relationship with your, with your relatives. Don't share your relationship with your colleagues. Because some they are not happy. You don't know what they are going through. When they look at your partner, they will say, Hey, if I can get that man, I will grab him with two hands. If I can get that woman, I will grab her with two hands. I'm telling you, you will be shocked. The person that you are taking your problems to will be the one that will take your husband or your, your, your wife one day. You'll be shocked, I'm telling you. So someone be, might be saying, woman of God, pray for me. I can see that my life is a mess. I want to go on. That's my weak point. Whatever the points that you are saying is similar to what I've been doing. Pray for me, woman of God. I want to start in a, a, a clean sheet. I want to start in a clean linen. I don't know. I, I no longer want to hang my dirty linen to my to, to other people, to my friends, to my colleagues, to my relatives. I'm the one who messed up. But I want to start afresh. I want to pray for you, my sister. I want to pray for you, my brother. It's not over until God says it's over. As long as you are still living, you'll have a partner. As long as you are still alive, you'll make it to have Three kids is not the end of the world. You'll have a new marriage, I'm telling you. You'll have a partner who will love you with your kids. In most cases, when I pray for people, I pray that when a person loves you, he will love you with your kids. Maybe the mother of your children is passed, has passed on. You are saying that woman of God, I didn't break up. But it's because of the nature of this world. My partner just passed on. I don't know where to go with my four kids. I don't know where to go with my five kids. But I want a person that can go on with me in life. God will make you to gather the broken pieces of your heart and move on with your journey. God will give you a woman who will take care of those children, kids as like if it is of her own. Those kids, they need a mother. They are looking for a mother figure. They are looking for a father figure. That child of yours is looking for a, a father figure. Is looking for a mother figure. Children of God, I'm praying for you. Let God my Almighty connect you with the right partner. Connect you with the right person who will love you with your kids. Who will love you the way you are. Who will love you even if you are jobless. Who will love you the way you are. 
who want who, who the person who will not compare you with the, the the previous relationship that he or she went through i want to pray for you right now i pray in the name of jesus father god my brothers and sisters here are they oh god they are looking for partners who love them father they want to gather their broken pieces and move on with the journey as we're starting a year some they've lost their partners in December with a car accident. Some it was because of the pandemic. Some it's because of this and that. But they want their relationships to go on. Heavenly Father, they don't know where to go. I pray for them that God Almighty remember them, O oh God. Give them another chance in life, O oh God. Some they've messed up with their tongue. Some they've messed up with their actions. Some they've messed up because they were talking with wrong people. Heavenly Father, you are a forgiving Father. Papa, what I know about you is that, that you are a forgiving God. Papa, I pray for that one. I pray for my brother. I pray for my sister. Give him or her, my father, a partner that will love him with a situation. Some that are having chronic, they think that maybe if they can disclose to their partner, they won't accept them. Heavenly Father, I know. Papa, you are the one who loves us. Heavenly Father, I know you'll give them the people who love them with their conditions. The one who love them with their diabetic, even with their high blood, even with their cancer. You'll give them their partners who will love them the way they are. Some Heavenly Father, they don't know where to go from here. Some they've been left by their husband, they don't know where they are, they are now. Some their husband, they're living with their friends, they're, they're failing to forgive them. Heavenly Father... I pray for forgiving heart. Give them a new heart, a new mindset, oh God, to accept their loss so that they can start afresh with their new partners. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, a social beat cannot be otherwise. My brothers and sisters, I prayed for you. I know something new is coming your way. Have a clean mindset. Have a new attitude. Love the partner that is coming. Love him or her the way she is. I love the, 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 the phrase that says, loving is about loving an imperfect person perfectly. Learn to compromise in a relationship. Learn to sacrifice. Some, sometimes you can find a man who is who's loving music with the whole of his heart. Try to love music because your partner loves that. Some maybe he loves soccer with the whole of his heart. Try to support him on that. But above everything, love the person. God will give you a God-fearing man or woman. That's what I encourage. That God Almighty, let him give you a path that a God-fearing man or woman of God. Because that's what I know, that God cannot give you a partner that will hurt you. God cannot give you a problem. God will give you a problem solver. God will give you a solution. I pray that God Almighty will give you that. I pray for you. I know so shall it be. I love you. See you next time. Love you. God bless you. Bye.